Hello everyone, for First Updates Now, I'm Tyler Olds, and you're watching Behind the Bot. It's fun show where we dive more into FTC robots and what makes them work. And today I'm here with team number 4673, Tiger Tech from Fenton, Michigan. Uh, Tiger Tech currently ranks second overall in Michigan right now. Uh, took first place in our last two remote events, and I can't wait to talk more about this incredible machine we have in front of here. Uh, joining us today is going to be Clayton, Alex, Drake, Caleb, and Jonas. And we're going to be diving more, of course, into the full ring journey of this robot, uh, wobble goal mechanism, uh, an interesting thing with how their drive is situated and programming, all this and more coming up on Behind the Bot. Giving you a voice. Making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. We would like to thank our friends at Stryker for supporting fun so we can continue to make content for you. Stryker makes some of the most revolutionary medical equipment and is a big supporter of FIRST and its participants. If you are looking for an internship or a career that supports you being in FIRST, check out careers.stryker.com to learn more. If you're on an FRC or FTC team and you're currently meeting safely in person and have a functional robot, we'd love to have you on our Behind the Bots or Behind the Bumper segments. Go ahead and reach out to us on any of our social channels, on Discord, or send us an email at admin at firstupdatesnow.com and let's get your team scheduled to be on First Updates Now. So Caleb, we're going to be starting out with the uh, intake uh, on this robot. I'd love to hear uh, a bit more about the design, maybe some of the iterations and, and things that have gone well and maybe things that haven't gone so well and what you've improved upon. Okay, so at the front of the intake, we have two inch wheels at the front, along with a slightly larger wheel in the middle to keep the poly belt centered. And we have some vectoring wheels to keep the, to bring in the rings. And this bumper right here is supposed to knock down the rings so we can just drive over and grab them really quickly. And there's enough room that only one ring can actually get under here because in a couple of competitions with our earlier bumper with this bristle stash right here, we would sometimes like run into two rings at the same time and they would get stuck. But with this, we can have one ring and it allows us to put it in a lot easier. And then we have a poly belt to grip the rings along with some zip ties at the back to sort of give it a little extra grip. Uh, and uh, during our testing, well, when we were prototyping building it, we did not account for the foam mat, so we put the intake too low, so we couldn't even move the bot. So then we had to take apart the entire robot, basically, to put it to get the intake back to a good height so we can use it. Uh, talk to me a little bit more about the bumper that you have. So uh, it looks like you changed materials as well, too, uh, with the bumper. So what material is that? Um, is, it looks like wood to me, but I can't quite tell. And then what made you uh, choose that uh, versus other materials? The uh, the bumper right now is uh, wood that we that we cut on our laser print on our laser cutter. And I mean, the material, I don't really think it matters that much why we chose that i think it was just so we could get it faster that's fair enough i wasn't sure if maybe uh the wood deadened the the ring or anything like that more but it does look like when you're playing with it that there's some good give on that so that that makes sense how that's able to deaden that ring uh so well so you can pick it back up um so uh, talking about um then going from when it intakes then into the into your magazine or your hopper um, can you talk to me about uh, just how it gets there, what motors are used to bring it up into there? Uh, and then I know uh, as well, Alex will be hopping in to talk about the shooter in that process as well too. So uh, we have a, a Rev Robotics hex motor on the side, uh, just under the shooter, and that's what makes this turn. And when we put the ring in here, it'll get pushed up and it will come out of the intake right here and go into this hopper which will lift up and using a kicker with a servo we can put it in the shooter um let's continue this uh and let's bring in alex if you don't mind to talk about the shooter uh, and then how that uh transfers in i think we alluded to it a little bit um that it looks like you're using a, a servo to kick it into your shooter but why don't you start from there tell us about that uh, and then let's go into the shooter itself so when, when the rings come into the hopper this when this um, kick it right here, kicks it into the, um, the shooter, 
and when when it goes in and it makes contact with the four inch fly rule, it shoots shoots out the fly rule at five thousand RPM about from this bumper right here, this angle bumper. The, and it also glides across the also glides across this airfoil to make it the shot more straight. So how long does it take when you shoot one ring? Uh, how long does it take for the motor to get up the speed for you to shoot a second one? Can you just is it rapid fire? Or does it take a moment for you to do that? Two seconds. Uh, so two seconds for, between each ring, typically. Yes. And then uh, I know Jonas will be talking about programming later, but how do you how do you determine when that is? Like, do you do you have a sensor that tells you when it's ready to go, or how does that work? Yes, we do have a sensor that tells us when to shoot. It's right. Very... It's the, it's right here. Sure. Yeah. And and I think, like I said, we'll, we'll grab Jonas on that a little bit to talk about some of your encoders and other functions uh, on your robot. Let's move on to uh, Drake. Who's going to be talking about the uh, wobble goal uh, mechanism that you have, the manipulator for that. Um, And, one of the things I, I think is interesting uh, for your team is uh, some teams are choosing to do just servos, just passive, but you actually do have like a full motor on with a pretty beefy gearbox. Um, so let's hear a little bit more about that. So this is a Rev Robotics DC motor, and we have a 100 to 1 gearbox attached to it, and we have a servo clamp. But no- we normally we have rubber tape here, but it fell off because it lost grip, and it clamps down. So it holds it in place. And then we have an acrylic L bracket. So this doesn't slide too low. So to put it over the 12 inch wall. Yeah. So with that uh, on there, uh, what made you want to choose to do a hundred to one gearbox? I mean, that's, that's a pretty, pretty beefy, robust uh, gearbox that you've done. So what made you decide to want to go that route? Just so we can make sure we could get it high enough without it stalling out. Yeah, that, that's fair enough on that. So, um, and then how much play do you have on, on the on your gripper itself? So, like, how much room for air does the driver have uh, when approaching a wobble goal um, on that? So there's this to help guide it in, and then this is there to help guide it in too. And the, so there's like about three inches, so they can line up within three inches from it. Sure. So they got a little bit of play, right? Is what you're saying. Yeah. Um, yeah it makes sense on that. So, uh, Caleb, I know you're going to be uh, talking about, uh, your drive, you know, you, you have a mechanum drive for things, so we won't be diving too much into that. But one of the things uh, I know we're going to be bringing Caleb for was to highlight, uh, how your chain is done, uh, inside the, uh, drive rails of your robot. So I'd love to see that. And, and talk to me a little bit more about that process. Yeah, we have a, uh, chain and sprocket system inside our chassis rails and, we decided this just because we, we really just wanted more room for the hopper. Because where the hopper is, if we did direct drive, then the motor would be it with the motor would be right where the hopper is. And that is not good for the game as well if we have both mo like because it, it'll take too much space and we can't put the hopper. And we have made and by putting the chain drive in the middle. Because if we if we put the chain drive outside the rails, like on the inside of the bob, then we then we then they would basically they would be touching each other, and we wouldn't be able to get them out at all. Even though we really can't get them out right now, and we'd have to take apart the whole bob. And we've been using the same motors the entire season. So that that is something I was going to follow up on. So what happens if a chain breaks? or falls off or something like that, how long would it take you to actually replace that chain? Probably a long time as we, we'd have to take off every single subsystem and then we would have to take apart the rail. So I'm going to, I'm going to infer that hasn't happened yet. Yeah, it hasn't happened yet. Oh, that's good. It's, we designed it to be robust enough to be able, so it doesn't break and. Yeah, fair enough on that. So. Uh, we're going to be uh, wrapping up uh, by going over to Jonas, who's going to be talking about some of the uh, different sensors, some of the programming that goes in the robot. Uh, so, Jonas, take us into that. So, talking about our shooter, we use PID control to tune our shooter to get it to a constant speed, even while shooting, so that it doesn't uh, dip below our required RPM. So, when it shoots, we set it to 5,000 RPM. But when a ring goes in, it tries to drop. But our PID control counters that to keep it at a constant so we can fire quicker. 
On our robot, we have quite a few sensors that we use. So for our servos, they have encoders along with our seven motors. And then we have our cameras. We use this for counting the number of rings in Auton. And then we use this to line up with the tower goal. And then over here, we have this uh, distance sensor that we use for our power shots and wobble goals. We use it for wobble goals during autonomous, and then we use it for uh, power goals and then uh, teleop. How does it work for the power shots? Can you describe that a little bit more? So we have a special button on our the robot, on our controller that basically set, sets it to a certain distance and the robot will go to that certain set distance away from the wall. And then we manually line up the bot with the power shots. I also forgot to mention that on our uh, rev expansion hubs, we have IMUs or inertial measurement units, also known as gyros, that we use for our angle around the field. Oh, that's cool. Not, not too many teams are using IMUs. We're starting to see more and more FTC teams starting to use that as it's very prominent in FRC. So really cool to see that your team is uh, utilizing that in FTC as well. Well, uh, 7643 Tiger Tech, thank you so much for taking the time to speak to us about uh, your robot, uh, the capabilities it has, and, and no doubt why your team has done so well. So we only wish you continued success uh, for this season and can't wait to see what your team continues to produce in seasons of the future. Thanks for taking the time, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. We would like to thank our friends at Stryker for supporting this video. Stryker is looking for current and future FIRST alumni to join their internship program and FIRST mentors who are looking for a great career with the company who actually supports their FIRST journey. Go to careers.stryker.com to learn more. You can also directly support FUN by joining FUN Nation. Click the join button and just for a few bucks a month, you'll unlock special perks and directly support us so we can keep making great content. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.